definitely being reminded rescue <laughs> can bring out the best and the worst in people. Something I sort of forgot about, I guess, mentally blocked out from when I was doing it often before and sharing about it often was the amount of criticism you get right alongside all of the support. Just And, and I knew I knew that there were going to be a couple of things in particular that were probably gonna garner mixed reactions. One of them, of course, being the topic of euthanasia. I emphasize, in case anyone is new here or in case anyone doesn't, doesn't do a little bit of homework before leaving their comments, we have, when vets have recommended it, when vets have said, hey, there's a chance. Hey, we might suggest trying this. We have spent literally over 20 grand trying to fix horses. We're not against <laughs> fixing fixable animals at all, <laughs> but there has to be a positive prognosis, a potentially positive outcome. And the percentage <laughs> for that successful outcome needs to be fairly high. Rescues don't have unlimited funds. I will never imply <laughs> that we don't need and benefit from people's donations. That is why I, I specifically stepped up from just being a person who saves animals to a nonprofit. I have the space, the time, the knowledge, the resources to provide a safe place for these animals. I also have a budget of my own though. I can't exceed that. In order to keep saving animals, I fundraise. I created a 501 so that I can fundraise so that we can save more lives than I could by myself. And the people who donate are people that maybe aren't in a position like this, but still want to be able to help animals. And so yes, to an extent like being responsible with the funds we have, managing them correctly is a consideration. It always will be, but it's not an either or. If, if a vet says, we think you should, full stop, we're gonna do it. We're gonna probably fundraise for it. <laughs> but in those cases I'm talking about where the bills exceeded $10,000 or even, Honestly, even $5,000 that comes out of our pockets. It just, it does. And we've done it. We've stepped up and done it. These girls, that is not the case. That is not what the vet said. Bingo, good. We're good. We don't have legitimate concerns right now. Bluey, part of it is the age. However, we have a pasture full of seniors. Age does not equal a justification for euthanasia. I specifically have saved senior animals of every species from that specific fate. What does potentially lead to euthanasia as a responsible choice is that she has a lot of other underlying issues. Her mouth smells horrific. And if you aren't super familiar with horses, that may not sound that bad to you, but that can be a whole bunch of problems. I think horse teeth specifically gets neglected quite often and they can pose, yeah, just serious threats to, to the animal's overall health. We are going to address the teeth though. <laughs> we are gonna look in that mouth when she's feeling better. We will take out any teeth we need to. We will do whatever dental procedures we can. That doesn't mean that there's not already severe lingering infections and all kinds of bacteria and stuff that have gotten into her system because of the very gross rotting and infections happening in her mouth. The other is her leg. She's in a, she's in pain. She is in pain. There is no question. The pain meds she's on have helped. Her whole leg though is swollen. And because of her age, coupled with just her overall health, the fact that we're pretty sure she has Cushing's pending a test, the fact that she's battling all these other issues. The surgeries that you would potentially do for a lot of the kinds of serious injuries that can cause what's happening in her leg 
you're not going to do those on a horse that's that old. They're not going to survive it. We're in a wait and see. My vet who has hands-on seen these animals and has decades of experience says we think the best option, we think the kindest thing you can do is to euthanize. That's what we will do. And I don't care what a person on the internet says. You haven't seen the animals. You're likely not a veterinarian. I don't care how many horses you've owned. I don't care how many other rescues you've seen, do things differently with different animals. These are unique. Every single case is unique. And I will never be so selfish or so damn determined to keep an animal alive that I will let them suffer under my care. I think anything other than that is the exact opposite of rescue. That's where I stand on that. Rescuing animals, horses from these situations, it's, that's, the, that's part of the reality of it. I need to get a thicker skin. I need to remember what it's really like to put yourself out there to try to do this. Get back in the mentality that all I need to focus on is the people that support it. Round out the rest. Focus on what I'm doing. Knowing that I'm doing right by the animals. But I just wanted to, to say it. Get it off my chest. And then move on. Ideally, this will be the only time that I do. I also have to assume that the people that are saying, if you couldn't afford to just do it all by yourself, no help, no fundraising, why did you take them? Why didn't you let somebody else? That they don't have any concept of what <laughs> the horse slaughter industry, the horse auctions, the kill pens, all of that, what the realities of that are. Because every single week, tons of horses are not saved and do shift to slaughter or are passed around so frequently through auctions and traders and kill pens that they die of sickness because that sickness is brutal, especially on horses that are already underweight or senior. And so I waited. I saw these mares. I contacted the page. I let them know that if, need, if needed, like we were around. And then I just waited. <laughs> And it was the day before their truck was showing up that I said, okay, I'm gonna pull the trigger on this. I'm fixing fences while I talk because nobody else has come through yet. The only chance that they have. And we're just going to do that up front out of pocket on our own and hope that we're able to get help after the fact. <laughs> But I paid the deposit and then I went to work updating you guys. This was not a, why didn't you let somebody else? There was nobody else. <laughs> Everybody else is worried about the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other animals being passed through those same situations every single day in this country. So spend a little time and inform yourself. It's pretty scary. <laughs> there will be children in the background. So I wanted to do an update on this video before posting it. I also kind of wanted to let the feelings <laughs> in this video marinate a little bit because it was right on the heels of me sitting down and reading through comments and it's a little emotionally fueled there's no doubt i try to uh avoid like those big dramatic feelings as much as possible but i also think it it's all relevant and maybe by putting it out there now going forward i won't need to keep explaining or defending the decisions that the rescue makes. I think, I think being held accountable and being diligent in raising awareness and monitoring rescues and pet owners in general, not just people rescuing by any means, is always smart. That's how we potentially avoid some of these really terrible situations. Just yeah, staying informed about a full situation. Is there a bug? Is it a bug or is it a piece of dirt? It's a bug. Hold on. Okay. Bug crisis has been resolved. It's back outside where he belongs. I think it's just important to like do your basic research. Maybe give people the benefit of the doubt now and then, especially people that are in rescue. Just, just stay informed before making accusations. It's really hard. Case in point, what I'm about to get into right now. It's been a minute since I've done a full update on our too many mares. I did post like short clips 
of them for people that were saying there were no updates at all I on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all of that, just little updates with them. Some of you may have guessed that is because we did, we did choose to put Bluey down. And I actually filmed <laughs> like right away in the aftermath, a much more emotional video. I have decided not to use that one. I gave myself a little more time um, as much as I owe and I do, I, I feel a sense of responsibility to everyone that is involved, not even just monetarily, financially, whatever, but just is, is wondering about them, is hoping for them, <laughs> rooting for them, whatever. The need to keep everyone updated and in light of some of the negativity that I got from people that I think are new, not longtime followers, but still, I just wanted to give myself a little grace period. So I do apologize though that I was not able to immediately let you all know what was going on. Essentially, she rallied. She was amazing. She was sassier. I would say in some ways like more full of life than Bingo was right up to the end after she'd done her courses of antibiotics and gotten her feet done and been on a good diet and had her pain meds and all of that. We were feeling really good about it. And she was, she was sassy. So much attitude in that little pony. Um, then it came, it was closing in on time for the follow-up actually when, when she went down. And for anybody that doesn't know, um, the reason we didn't immediately address things like you're doing x-rays and everything on her leg and doing Cushing's tests and dealing with her mouth was because she was so, so sick that first vet visit that the vet just said like, we can't, we're not gonna put her through anything else. Let's get the antibiotics in, let's get her healthy, see if we can even get her healthy and get her stable. Cause messing with her more right now is, is not advised. So that's the only reason we waited. Vet's advice, again, every decision we made regarding them was what the vet recommended. After feeling great and being happy and comfortable, she went down. Then we started the awful process of getting her back up and then she'd go back down and then we'd get her up and then she'd go back down and done this with horses before. It's really devastating. I wouldn't say all the time because we have had horses go down on us that we've gotten up that are still with us today, three, four years later. But a lot of the time if a horse goes down like that, especially a senior horse, and they have to repeatedly be helped up over the course of a day or two, like they're telling you. It's time they've given up. And after the consultation with the vet, she was absolutely adamant, fully supportive, like no question euthanized this horse. She was almost to that point the first time she came out. And part of me will always wonder if I should have listened to her right then. But I mean, I'd only, I'd only had this, this mare a couple of days at that point, really. Um, and I wanted to give her at least the fighting chance, you know, see what she was like as a healthier horse. Guess I'm glad that we gave her that time where her last few weeks were like, I don't know, hopefully kind of beautiful and happy for her. Attention, care, great food, lots of treats. We didn't put her in the situation she ended up in. And I always have to remind myself of that though. Cause it is easy to kind of get inside your own head and really carry a lot of blame over situations like this. Cause of course you don't, you don't take on any rescue animal hoping <laughs> that this will be the outcome. But the reality is when you're doing this kind of like traumatic rescue, I suppose, I mean, some of our rescues are just owner surrenders. That's not really a, it's not really a rescue. That's just a offering like a safe haven for animals that, you know, loving owners can't keep anymore. This though, this more true, I guess you could call it rescue, getting animals that most of the time were discarded because they have huge issues. They're old, they're basically on their last leg and rather than giving them the humane death or investing the potentially thousands of dollars that it would take to fix them, people try to make, you know, the few hundred dollars they can essentially at an auction and wipe their hands clean of them. And so then we're taking that problem on. A good percentage of the time you have to just prepare yourself that euthanizing is 
rescuing them, giving them that humane death that their previous owners refused to do in lieu of a few hundred dollars. We invest <laughs> thousands only to do that for them. And I know there are rescues that very specifically seek out these cases and I don't know how they do it. They are absolutely my heroes. <laughs> that they will pick out the horses that clearly do not need to spend another day suffering, let alone in those circumstances where, <laughs> I have a child running a tractor all over me and a Roomba in the background. Don't need to spend another day in those circumstances where they are potentially going to be trailered, hauled around, penned with horses they don't know, getting sick, not being fed, not being given clean water, and then in the end of it all, possibly making a huge long trip to Mexico to be slaughtered. I do not know how mentally, emotionally they do that, but they are amazing. I'm glad that she didn't have to go through another shipment. We have had a lot of a lot more research done. It was kind of a spontaneous rescue, if you all couldn't tell. And since then, I've done a lot more deep diving research and a lot more information has come out because it was a very new pen that we pulled her from. The long and short of it is we will not be pulling horses from there anymore. Happy update though. And I do have videos to post of her. I just wanted to, wanted to get this out there before. So I've kind of just been holding back all of these other updates. But bingo is amazing. Not pregnant. Neither of them were pregnant which is a relief. <laughs> Probably one of the main reasons she was able to recover. She has been cleared, um, totally disease virus free now. She was able to join the other ponies. She's beautiful. She has shed all of that nasty, wormy, sick fur. She is totally sound. So I will, I will get those update videos posted. We hope to have her with us <laughs> for a very long time. I've been really stressing myself out about posting this, getting it off my chest, sharing it is going to take a huge load off. Come on, pretty girl. You're just out here living your best life, huh? Unlimited food, water, friends. 